Hi, welcome to class 8 Geography, Resources and Development. Chapter 3 Mineral and Power Resources. In this chapter, we will read about what are minerals and where do we find them, and furthermore, what are they used for. So, if you see, rocks on earth have several materials that are called minerals which are mixed in them. Now, it does not mean that we eat rocks directly. Of course, these minerals need to be extracted, processed and then used, but their origination is from rocks. So a fine definition for mineral is a naturally occurring substance that has a definite chemical composition. And another important thing is that minerals are not evenly distributed on earth. That means you will not find minerals everywhere in equal proportion. Minerals are usually concentrated in area where there is a lot of rock formation. Some minerals are found in areas which are not easily accessible, such as the Arctic Ocean bed and Antarctica. Minerals are found in different types of geological environments under varying conditions. We have read many times that the geological structure of Earth is uneven. That means no two places are the same. You will find mountains at some places, you will find plains at some places, you will find plateau in some places, then you will find forest in some places. And we also know that the weather and the climatic condition is also not same in two places. Because climate changes with latitude. As we go up, it's cold out there and in the center, it's very warm in the equator. Again, minerals don't need any kind of human interference. They are natural. Now, it is very important to identify the minerals because then you will not make proper use of it. We need to identify them with the help of physical properties like color, density, hardness and other chemical properties such as solubility. Now let's understand what are the different classification of minerals. So we have more than 3000 types of different minerals. But to classify them, we need to understand their composition. So broadly minerals are classified into two categories, metallic and non-metallic. So metals as we know, they are hard substances. And they are also very good conductor of heat and electricity. That's why we use metallic utensils to cook food because it's a good conductor of heat. And then we use copper wires for transferring electricity. And metals also have characteristic luster or shine. So some of the example of uh, metals are iron ore, bauxite, manganese. Now furthermore, if you see metals are divided into two categories, that is ferrous and non-ferrous. So ferrous minerals are nothing but iron ore, manganese and chromites that contain iron. So look at this initial two letters of the word ferrous, Fe. So if you look at the periodic table, Fe stands for iron. So all the ferrous minerals are nothing but ores of iron. Now on the other hand, a non-ferrous mineral does not contain iron. So there are other metals such as gold, silver, copper or lead. So if you see all these metals such as gold, silver, copper, they are not hard. You can twist and turn with your hands. So this was all about metal. Now let's go to non-metallic minerals. So non-metallic minerals do not contain metals. It is very simple to understand in that way. So some of the examples are limestone, mica and gypsum. So if you see they are not at all hard and they don't contain any ounce of iron. Some other mineral fuels such as coal, petroleum, they are also part of non-metallic minerals. So this was a brief classification of different types of minerals. Now as I said earlier, minerals need to be extracted and there are three ways of doing so. Mining, drilling or quarrying. So drilling in the earth's surface to take out the rocks buried under the earth is called mining. That's why you see many mines, they are like a ventilator. It takes you inside the earth's surface. It's quite dangerous and risky. Then we have something called open cast mining. It is very famous in India. So what they do is, with the help of dynamite, they blow the earth's surface to remove the layer that contains the mineral. So another type of mining is shaft mining. So what they do is, they make a deep bore on the earth's surface. It is done at a greater depth to reach the mineral deposits. So all of this falls under mining. The next type of extraction is called drilling. This is usually done to extract petroleum and natural gas. So here's a picture that shows how drilling is done. And the third type of extraction is quarrying. So quarrying is done by simply digging out the mud. I think this is the most easiest one, though we need hard labor for this, but it is comparatively cost effective. So what happens here is you take bunch of people, start digging out the earth's surface. So this is good for minerals that lie near the surface. You don't have to go deep down. Now let's try to understand the distribution of minerals. So there are basically three types of rocks, igneous, metamorphic and sedimentary rocks. And minerals are usually found in these rocks in different proportion. Metallic minerals are found in igneous and metamorphic. Igneous rock is formed by solidifying of molten magma. And metamorphic rock is formed when igneous and sedimentary rocks go through high pressure and intense heat. And both of them are found in large quantity in plateau. That's why I've said this earlier that most of the metallic minerals are found in like Chota Nagpur plateau and areas near Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, Odisha. Sedimentary rocks are found mostly beneath the seabed. 
So if you look at a sedimentary rock, you'll see a lot of decayed fossils in between. Fossils is nothing but decayed plants and animals. As a result, mineral fuels like coal and petroleum are found in sedimentary strata. It's very easy to understand that to extract oil and petroleum, we usually go to seabed. So this was all about the distribution part of the minerals. Now we'll read about the distribution of minerals in India. Let's read about iron. India has deposits of high grade iron ore. So they are found in these areas. I'm going to show all of these places on a map. Just have a look at it. The next one is bauxite. Major bauxite producing areas are. I'll just show all of these places on a map. Just have a look at it. And remember, bauxite is an ore of aluminium. Then we have mica. India is the largest producer and exporter of mica in the world. Again, look at the map and see the places. And coppers are produced in Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Jharkhand, Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh. Manganese is found in Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Odisha, Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh. Next we have limestone. Again pause the video and look at the map. The next mineral is gold. So we have one mine in Karnataka with the name of Kolar that produces a lot of gold. That is also the deepest in the world which makes mining of this ore a very expensive process. Digging inside the earth is an expensive process, remember that. And it's quite dangerous and risky as well. And then we have another mineral, salt. It is obtained from seas, lakes and rocks. So evaporation is the process through which we extract salt. Again, India is one of the world's leading producer and exporters of salt. So again, look at this map. Here you can see the extraction of salt from Sambar Lake in Rajasthan. So remember, Sambar Lake is in Rajasthan. Now let's read about where the minerals are used. So they are used in many industries. Since they are usually hard, therefore it is good for making jewelries. So copper is another metal used in making coins or pipes or wires. We use silicon in computer industries for making computer chips. So as I said before, bauxite is an ore of aluminium and is used in automobiles and airplanes, bottling industries and even in kitchen cookware. Conservation of minerals just like trees, plants and water, we need to conserve our minerals also because they are non-renewable resource, which means they are depleting and it takes thousands of years for formation. I mean human lifespan is what 60 or 70 years? So thousands is like a long way and that is the reason we call it non-renewable resource. And the reason is because our population is a lot and at the rate at which we are consuming these minerals, their reproduction is not having at the similar rate. So it is necessary to reduce wastage in the process of mining or any other activity. So one of the good way to reduce wastage is recycling of metals. The next topic is power resources. Power means energy and we need energy for industry, agriculture, transport, communication and defense sector. So to run absolutely anything on this planet, we need energy in some or the other form. So power resources are broadly categorized into two categories, conventional and non-conventional resources. Conventional means traditional, old way and non-conventional means modern, new way. Conventional sources. So they are those energy resources which have been common for a long time. For example, firewood and fossil fuels. We have been using these two for very long time. That's why they fall under conventional sources. Just have a look at this picture. In this you can see what are the conventional sources of energy and what are the advantages and disadvantages. So pause the video and look at it. So some of the conventional sources of energy are firewood. It is widely used for cooking and heating. Villagers still use this till date. The next is the fossil fuel. So when we say fossil fuel, we mean coal, petroleum and natural gas. So dead remains of plants and animals which were buried under the earth for millions of years got converted into fossil fuels with the help of heat and pressure. So this is totally an evolutionary process. When there were new land formations, a lot of changes took place. A lot of plants and animals got destroyed. And over the years, these dead remains of plants and animals, they got converted into fossil fuel with the help of heat and pressure. And the next conventional energy is coal. They are found in abundant. So coal is used in industries such as iron and steel. But more importantly, we use coal to generate electricity and it is called thermal power. So coal is found beneath the earth's surface. Therefore, it is referred to as buried sunshine. So the leading coal producers of the world are China, USA, Germany, Russia, South Africa and France. In India, coal is found in Ranigan, Charia, Dhanbad and Bukaro in Jharkhand. So you see Bukaro steel plant in Jharkhand and we have read before that coal is used in industries such as iron and steel. So now you know that industries are also created close to the land of resources. And the next type of energy is petroleum. They are found between the layers of rocks and is drilled from oil fields located in offshore and coastal areas. So remember this, we always extract first crude oil. And after processing in refineries, we produce a variety of products like diesel, petrol, kerosene, wax, plastics and lubricants. 
and petrol is also called black gold because it is very valuable so the countries that produce petroleum are iran iraq saudi arabia and qatar so mostly the middle east countries and other countries are usa russia venezuela and algeria in india we have places like digboy which is in assam bombay high in mumbai and deltas of krishna and godavari and the next form of energy is natural gas so they are found exactly where petroleum is there and again we need to do drilling in order to bring it to the surface natural gas is also used as domestic and industrial fuel for domestic we use natural gas to run cars buses and vehicles because it is the cleanest form of energy we don't have much of emission carbon emission through natural gas some of the major producers of natural gas are russia norway uk and the netherlands so mostly the european nations are the major producers of natural gas that's why you see most of the european countries they look very serene and beautiful because they don't have much of carbon emission because they use such a such a clean natural gas in india we extract natural gas from jaisalmer krishna godavari delta tripura very few countries in the world have sufficient natural gas reserves of their own for example india imports natural gas from sudan syria iran and nigeria so when we consume a lot of fossil fuel there is a huge side effect because burning of fossil fuel leads to burning of carbon and when carbon content increases in atmosphere it creates a huge concern therefore we are constantly looking for various non conventional sources of energy that are cleaner and the next type of energy is hydro power remember power produced out of water so rain water and river water are stored in a dam that falls from height and when they fall over turbine blades they move and the moving blades turns the generator to produce electricity and this is called hydroelectricity and it is a non conventional source of energy because after the generation of electricity the water is used for irrigation so there is no wastage so currently 1/4 of world's electricity is produced by hydro power and the countries that use are paraguay norway brazil and china we also have hydro power stations in india and they are located at bhakra nangal dam gandhi sagar dam nagarjuna sagar dam and damodar valley projects Moving on to the non-conventional sources of energy. They are also called unusual source of energy. We know that fuel reserves are getting exhausted and fossil fuels also causes environmental pollution. Therefore we need to move towards using non-conventional sources of energy such as solar energy, wind energy, tidal energy which are renewable. So one such non-conventional sources of energy is solar energy. Just go through this image and look at some non-conventional sources of energy, their advantages and disadvantages. So with the help of solar cells we can produce electricity and most of the tropical countries benefit out of this solar energy. Tropical countries are those countries that are there in the equatorial region because this place receives ample of sunshine as the sun rays falls directly on earth. Now some of the uses of solar energy are solar heater, solar cooker, solar dryers and they are also used in traffic signal for lighting purpose. And the next type of non-conventional energy is wind energy. It is inexhaustible which means it will never get over. For a long time we have been using wind energy for grinding grain and lifting water. But in modern time we have something called windmills. The winds rotate the windmill which is connected to a generator and that produces electricity. So an ideal location for putting a windmill is coastal region and mountains because this place have strong and steady wind blow. Some of the wind farms are uh, found in Netherlands, Germany, Denmark, UK, USA and Spain. There are also developed nations and they have tapped on wind energy quite a lot. India being a developing nation, they are still coming up because wind energy is expensive. Building a windmill is very expensive. And the next type of energy is nuclear power. Power is extracted from nuclei of atoms, especially elements like uranium and thorium. So we need a nuclear reactor for that. In that we need to do a nuclear fission. The meaning of nuclear fission is blasting the atoms so that it produces power. Currently USA and Europe are the largest producer of nuclear power. In India, Rajasthan and Jharkhand have large deposits of uranium and thorium is found in large quantities in monazite sands of Kerala. Some of the nuclear plants in India are located in Kalpakkam in Tamil Nadu, Tarapur in Maharashtra and Rana Pratap Sagar near Kota in Rajasthan, Naroda in UP and Kaiga in Karnataka. This is a picture of nuclear energy, how nuclear energy is used to create electricity. I may do a separate video on this and the next form of energy is geothermal energy. So by the word you can figure out it's geo and thermal. Thermal means heat heat geo means land so heat energy obtained from earth is called geothermal energy so as you go more and more inside the earth the heat increases because of the molten magma in the core of the earth now this heat energy can be used to generate power so geothermal energy is also form of hot springs something like hot steam coming out of land so they are basically used for cooking and bathing 
So here's a picture, just have a look at this. So all you do is you drill a bore inside the earth's surface and extract that heat through pipe. And that heat when mixed with water produces steam and steam is used to rotate the turbine which in turn produces electricity. And the next form of energy is tidal energy. So previously we have read about hydal energy. This is tidal energy. So please do not get confused. So energy generated from tides is called tidal energy. So if you look at this figure, it is pretty evident as to how tidal energy works. You build a dam, on top of this all the vehicles go and beneath it you see all these small small holes. The tides make the water flow through it and inside there is a turbine. So with the help of the force generated by the tides, these turbines move and when these turbines move and that produces electricity. And remember in hydal energy we stored the water and made it fall from a height. So here we are not storing the water, we are just stopping the water by making a dam and allowing it to flow through a channel. Just remember this difference. And the last form of energy is biogas. So biogas is made out of organic waste such as dead plants and animal material, animal dung and kitchen waste. With the help of bacteria, we decompose the organic waste. So eventually biogas will be emitted, it's like a gas which is nothing but a mixture of methane and carbon dioxide. So it is good for cooking and lighting. It also produces high amount of organic manure, fertilizer for agricultural purpose. So this was all about the biogas part. You can see this picture and have a look at this. So there's a big tank in that all the organic waste is dumped and then bacteria is added so that the decomposition process takes up. Eventually biogas is emitted and we harness that energy and we use it for cooking and lighting. And the byproduct of this is also organic manure. So to conclude this chapter, energy is everywhere, but we can see that harnessing this energy is both difficult as well as costly. So this is absolutely true because there are so many ways by which energy can be created. So with the help of proper knowledge and the existing natural resources, we can create energy. So one of the things that we also need to remember is we shouldn't be wasting the energy because energy saved is energy generated. So with this, we have come to an end of this chapter. This chapter was very very long. I hope you found this informative. As usual, thanks for watching. If you like the video, consider giving it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And make sure you are subscribed, you'll get an alert when my next video comes or if you want me to make anything specific, do let me know.